Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about that front mount intercooler that I recently installed. I'm going to be letting you know whether or not it was actually worth it. I was actually driving with it for about two weeks now, so I have a good amount of uh, seat time with it to see whether or not the uh, there was like some improvements, power gains, cooling issue, cooling benefits, um, you know, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the very first experience with the intercooler. After I initially installed it, you have to unplug your battery, plug your battery back in, and then you start driving. So once I did that, I drove the car. Honestly, I didn't feel any gains. I felt really slightly different noise. You know, you could hear a slightly different noise, but I didn't really feel any power gains. You know, they say you make 20 wheel horsepower, X amount of torque. I'm not sure the exact numbers. You could look that up. But after day two, I actually found there was a power difference. So I'm like, hmm, this, this is interesting. So there, there was a power difference in the seat of the pants feel. Basically from a from a, like a 3000 RPM third gear roll, my car is now breaking loose. It wasn't doing that before. I also have fearable stage three tune for, for those of you who don't know. So that obviously helps, but yeah. So in third gear, I'm starting to break loose. I was not doing that. So right off the bat, now I'm feeling a power increase. So that's one, that, that's one benefit. So now the very next thing I noticed after driving for a few weeks, my gas mileage has actually gone up by about one or two miles to the gallon. So with the prices now, that's that's a win-win. But either way, the gas mileage is definitely better. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm getting better gas mileage because recently I've been driving a little easier. Now since I put the intercooler, I've been testing it a little bit. And my numbers are the same, if not better, and I've been getting on the car more. So I'm, I'm actually seeing really better gas mileage. So that's a real benefit of having it. Besides the safety of what it provides for the car, which I'm going to get into right now. So now as far as intake air temperatures, one pull, that, this was probably like the third pull or the fourth pull. I'm not sure which one because I have screenshots saved. My intake air temperature, I'll put them on the screen, was a 51.8 from the intake. Post intercooler is 53.6. And this is right when, right at, as soon as I did that pull, I looked at it, I screenshotted it. Another one I have is a 53.6 intake air temperature and that's from the intake and the other one's post. That one's a little higher at 57.2. Ambient temperature outside was 47. So all of these pulls, it never went above 57 degrees as I looked. Everything stayed nice and cool. The faster you go, the, the cooler this thing just gets. So the intake air temperatures clearly are staying much, much lower. So now let's go to the nitty gritty what a lot of people want to know. Does it actually make power? From a seat of the pants feel, absolutely. Now I have my 60, 100 mile per hour testing. And from that, my best time on a 30 degree day with a lower DA, I'm going to put the screenshots up for you, that way you can see them directly, was a 622, 6.22, 60 to 100 at 33 degrees. Now, after the intercooler install, same exact setup, a warmer day it was 45 degrees, according to the draggy, my car on the dash was reading 47, but I'm going by what the draggy saying, I managed to run a 5.96 and the DA was actually a little bit higher, which would actually hurt performance. So with that being said, a warmer temperature and a higher DA, my numbers should be worse. But instead, they're three tenths of a second faster. So that proves the seat of the pants feel. The intercooler does in fact create more power. The car runs better, runs stronger. It's, it's faster without a doubt. Yeah, baby. <laughs> So I was very skeptical about getting the intercooler. I kind of was being cheap about it. I'm not going to lie. But um, yeah, it definitely makes a nice improvement in performance. It keeps the car safer. So that's a really, really good benefit because you don't want to blow your car up. Not that you're necessarily going to blow it up, but the more you push it, the more stress. If you get high knock, you can cause damage. So this will keep your knock count down. As far as what I'm seeing, it's going to keep your intake air temperatures down, which keeps your performance up. So that is consistency, which... Who wants a car that one day you step on it, the first pull it feels super strong, second pull is a little weaker, third pull is a little weaker, and so on and so forth. I personally don't drive like that all the time, but hey, if you want to drive like that, that's cool. Make sure you have the proper equipment to do so. That way you keep your car running safe and, you know, who wants an expensive repair bill that they don't need? 
So I definitely do feel that the intercooler is an excellent, excellent upgrade. It was worth the money. Now I also want to get into the sound. It does change your induction sound ever so slightly. Nothing too crazy, but it does change it very slightly. Um, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's got like maybe like a little more of a throaty, like airier sound, as well as your diverter valve. At least on at least on my car, my diverter valve coming from the intake, you could hear a blow off sound a lot. Not a lot louder, but a little bit louder. So that's just added benefit to it as well. That's not why you that's not why you're doing this mod. But I figure I go over all the differences that I've noticed. So your diverter valve will sound a little louder, your induction sound will change a little bit, all for the better. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I will be doing more testing. Maybe I'll get some quarter mile runs eventually, stuff like that to see how much better the car is doing in that respect. But the 60 to 100 has improved three tenths of a second from my best time to my best time. You know, I had a range from the other ones, but I compared the two best times I was able to achieve with the setup before and now the setup after. So um, it's without a shadow of a doubt making the car faster. So with all that said, Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. More content coming. I'm going to continue on with the build. I'm still deciding which direction I'm going to take the car. So as I keep going, we'll keep evolving and we'll get better and better. So take care, guys, and thanks for watching.